Um, the talk was basically about the cyber underground economy, uh, what the parts of it were. In particular, I talked about uh, botnets, uh, which are taking over their compromised machines, hundreds of thousands of machines working under the command of a botnet controller. And we were interested in seeing, number one, how, how they were controlled and uh, what sort of things they did. This particular botnet was a Torpig botnet, and it, uh, it collected credentials from banks, your, your login and password from a bank, so it could steal your money, could steal your identification. And we want to know uh, just how effective it was, how much money was compromised in a, in a short period of time and how the individual compromised computers knew how to connect up to the botmaster, which was changing their location quite frequently. And so um, we, we put a, a, a vulnerable machine out on the net so that it got um, compromised and became part of the botnet. We reverse engineered uh, what what sort of software they downloaded on it and found out what the protocols were for communicating with it. And, um, and so as a result of that, we found out that there's you know, liter literally hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars could be made in just a 10-day period that we owned the botnet. That, that is, we took it over from the, from the uh, individuals that originally owned it um, and uh, got a better insight into just how big a cost loss there was and also identification theft and uh, so we got to understand that. We also as a result of this got to work with law enforcement uh, and saw what kind of problems they ran into and, and how useful they were. Also the ISPs that actually supply platforms for these bot masters to, to run on to collect their data and um, and so it was kind of an interesting look into that part of the cyber economy. Second part of the talk was about fake antivirus uh, software, sometimes known as scareware. And scareware is when you get on your computer and it tells you you've been infected and if you pay me some amount of money that, um, that then I, uh, I'll, I'll cleanse your computer for you. And it's, it's, it's completely fake. It's run like a real business. Part of what we were interested in was that it actually operated like a real business in that it would give refunds on occasion. And uh, that surprised us and we found out that that was uh, because they actually collect money through credit cards. Those have to be processed and um, when they're processed, if there's too many complaints, they could lose their credit card processor, would drop them as a, as a customer. And, uh, and so we worked out a, a financial model working with an economist to go and show us um, when it was that they actually gave refunds. And they, and they kept, kept very good track of, of when people complained to the credit card company and got refunds directly from the credit card company, which are called chargebacks. And when that, that increased to a level where they were threatened to be cut off, then they started giving refunds, and we could show a direct cause and effect of that. And so, just another another little understanding of the cyber economy. First off, I had, had very positive view of the of the summer study. I think it's I think it's particularly great for the students. I mean, for the students to get to encounter people that are doing the the uh, the research and find out what the different kinds of research are. And I thought there was a good mix of doing introductory type, introductory and overview talks on different subjects, as well as talks that go into details of what, what's going on, uh, things that are more cutting edge versus overview, and that gives the students things to think about. Um, I, thought the, I thought the idea of having the study, having the, the uh, group, uh, breakouts and working on things was a good idea. Um, I, I think I would, I, if I had anything that was not, that, that I would think about changing, it would be making the talks, put planned breaks in the talks, because three and a half hours is a long time. Now we did do breaks, we learned I think from the first day where 
uh, that that was better, but I think that's something to pay attention to because your attention span goes down. Um, but I think that I think the uh, students felt comfortable asking the speaker. You know, not not they didn't ask too many in this session, but outside the session, coming coming up to the speakers afterwards and asking them questions, and and I think that's a great a great thing for the students to get out of this. You know, to to get to actually talk to people, not just listen to them or not just see a video of what they're talking about. So first off, I, I'm not aware of all the things you're doing. Okay, but the things that I am aware of that you're doing, I think, I think it's great. You're ahead, you're ahead of the curve in, in, in adopting these technologies and, and going to a, you know, to a, a wired society, if we might say, or an internet type society. Um, so, I, so I think it's good. Uh, other people should pay attention to what you're doing. I've, you know, I've heard from some of the other participants here, the, the speakers that, you know, they wish their home country were doing more of this, and uh, yeah, so I, th I think it's good. But I'm not, I'm not aware of, of all of the technology that's going on here. I, you know, I, I'm going to get to see downtown Estonia tonight. I think that's going to be great. I mean, uh, downtown Tallinn tonight. I think that'll be great. But uh, um, I have to say, I haven't studied Estonia, you know, to, to find out all of what's going on.